covered bridges, living pieces of history, timber-framed connections to a time long gone, and a treasured part of any community lucky enough to have one. The capital of covered bridges in New England? No question, Vermont, with around 100. New Hampshire follows with about half that. But don't count Massachusetts out. The Commonwealth's got a handful of classics, mostly out here in the hill towns, west of the Connecticut River. So hop on board for the great Massachusetts covered bridge road trip. This is Chronicle on WCBB Channel 5. At one time, there were more than 200 covered bridges in Massachusetts, including one that has spanned three centuries, the Ware Hardwick Bridge, at 137 feet, the longest in the state. The town of Hardwick owns it, and they're in Worcester County, and the town of Ware owns it in Hampshire County. Tracy Opolinsky, select woman from the town of Ware, says the bridge has, at times, exhibited a split personality. And a matter of fact, for decades, it was a white painted line on the floor of the bridge delineating the towns. And you could come at any point in time and see one part of the bridge in disrepair and the other part in repair. Fortunately, the towns of Hardwick and Ware have agreed to meet in the middle, restoring this classic in 2010. I've known this bridge my entire life. I grew up in Ware, which is the next town over, and it's always fascinated me. We find Dean Pariso doing what he's been doing since he was a teenager, taking pictures of this local landmark. I've taken pictures of this bridge from almost any angle you can think of. I've been on the road, I've been in the river, I've been on boulders balanced in the river, and most recently I've started shooting it with, with my drone. Pariseau's Humble Valley Photography specializes in New England landscape photography with a special affection for covered bridges, and this one in particular. I'm sure people near the other covered bridges feel the same way about their bridges. I feel about this one, and you know, throughout my life I've never lived more than a half an hour away from it, and it's just been a fixture. Our visit to Hardwick gives us the perfect excuse to stop at one of our favorite spots anywhere, Rose 32 Bread, this high-end bakery cafe, a runaway success in the Hardwick village of Gilbertville. They'll say, did you ever think? And we're like, yeah, <laughs> we saw it. That's why we did it. Cindy and Glenn Mitchell had reason to be confident. After all, Glenn is a former winner of the World Cup of Baking in Paris. They moved to this tiny town from San Francisco, where they just sold a bread business, one that began with a single bakery and grew into a massive wholesale business employing hundreds. At some point, I, I felt like I really wasn't baking anymore. I was sort of managing people to bake. The Mitchells cashed out and moved east to find better schools for their children. Gone were the endless meetings, and back came the baking. Now, both children are involved at Rose 32, with son Henry taking a bigger hand in the baking. The question becomes, is history repeating itself? Are the Mitchells considering expansion? No, not ever, not once. In California, 250 employees, four retail stores, sold bread in 27 states. This is it. We're good. Before leaving, we notice a picture of the Hardwick Bridge on the wall. I love telling people about it. The picture taken by Dean Pariseau. It was a Christmas present, it was really sweet. Yeah. And uh, I think I've made a new friend. Moving on to our next bridge, just a 20 minute drive. Give or take a couple of hundred years. This actually has the dubious distinction of being the newest of the old buildings at Old Sturbridge Village. Tom Kelleher is a historian and curator at Old Sturbridge Village. Most of our buildings are antiques we've moved here from one of the six New England states. Our oldest one was built in Massachusetts in 1725. This of the old buildings is the newest that was built in Dummerston, Vermont in 1870. Good boys. This old bridge may look like it's been here forever, but it was moved here from Vermont in 1951. 
they were going to tear it down. Old Sturbridge Jewelers got wind of it and offered to take it off their hands. Actually, there are three covered bridges at Old Sturbridge Village. The Vermont Bridge, another constructed by the Mill Pond 50 years ago, and a third that might be a little hard to spot. We're standing in the third. The timbers in the ceiling of this room were a covered bridge built in Fish House, New York in 1818, hidden in plain sight as it were. Unless somebody points out that the curved ceiling was a covered bridge, um, I don't think many people would make that connection. And Sturbridge, Sturbridge Village, such a great spot. It's mm. open all year round, mm. but just on the weekends during the winter months. Right, not everybody knows that. And back to the Hardwick and Ware Covered Bridge. To make things even more confusing, it is sometimes referred to as the Gilbertville Bridge because it sits in the village of Gilbertville in Hardwick on the Hardwick side <laughs> of the Hardwick Ware Bridge. Either way, it's beautiful. Very well done. <laughs> all right, next, a different kind of roadside dining.